morning. I'm Greg with the Oily Craft Room. My wife Judy is behind the camera. Today we're going to talk about dry boxes for 3D filament. So recently bought a uh, Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon uh, 3D printer. Great. I absolutely love it. Uh, they have that automatic uh, material system that helps you identify material that's in their special spools. However, I had some filament that I wanted to be able to use um, that is not in a Bamboo Lab uh, spool. And so came up with an idea and had some uh, creative uh, other videos that I saw on YouTube and decided I would uh, try and make some of my own here. So well, let's get started on the parts list, right? So first thing is we bought a pack of uh, six of these cereal boxes and off of Amazon. Uh, they're the four liter size. Uh, we will include a list of all those items down below in the description down below. So we'll be using one of those for our build. Secondly, I bought some, uh, needed some bearings to go in, in these pieces, and we'll talk about these pieces in a minute. So these bearings, they'll actually fit in here and they'll fit in our design. And I'll show you here in just a minute. We had some PTFE uh, tubing this comes in about a six meter roll. I broke it into three pieces. And then we also had some, uh, needed some light uh, sewing machine oil to lubricate the bearings. We need some desiccant here. And I've got some desiccant here and we're gonna use that. We'll put some of that in here in just a minute as well. Um, then I've got this hygrometer. This is a temperature and humidity sensor. We're going to include that in our build. And let's see, we've got the PTFE fitting that will go into the dry box as well. And let's see. Okay, so in order for this fitting, I've got to drill a hole in this plastic. And we want to come up about two inches. And you say, well, why two inches? Well, if we look at the top of this, that spool is going to be sitting right about here. So if that spool is sitting there. I want it to be up about two inches above there and you can kind of see where my, I, I put a dot on there just for reference. It doesn't have to be exactly two inches. Let me see if I can turn it so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so this hole right here that I need to drill in here needs to be the diameter of that fitting right here. That fitting right there is 11 30 seconds. So the first time one of these I made, I tried a 5 16 bit. That was too small. Well, a 3 8 bit is too big. So 11 30 seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this drill and about 2 inches up. And in case you're wondering, it doesn't have to be exactly 2 inches. But if you look right here, if I do these two fingers here, right about the knuckles, guess what? That 2 inch mark is right there just above where that knuckle is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill a hole right about there. And trust me, it's a lot easier if you get the right size bit than trying to, trying to waller out the hole. So now we're going to try to get that just slightly started. Now you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. And we're actually going to tighten that in. We're gonna tighten that in there until it stops. Make sure that's all the way in there. And you can see there's no, there's no gap between there and that plastic, right? So that's what we're going to do. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come to our 3D printed model. Now I used, I used some filament that I had that is not Bamboo Lab. It's a generic uh, type of filament. It's from 3D Max. I purchased this some time ago and had a really great deal on that. Now why would you ask would I use that and not the Bamboo Lab? Well, this filament for a one kilogram spool was $8.99 per spool, about 10 spools. Okay, the Bamboo Lab, great filament. The refills, the cheapest I've seen the refills is about $16.99 for a kilogram. 
Now, there may be differences in the filament, but this filament is perfectly good and I wanna be able to use it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some desiccant and I'm gonna pour some desiccant. And I'm just gonna, for the most part, fill that up with desiccant, right? And I've got, and again, I 3D printed this on the, on the printer. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna scoot this over I'm going to take this hygrometer and I'm going to snap this hygrometer right here in place. Now you don't have to have the hygrometer, but it does let you know temperature, humidity, um, because if your if your uh, filament gets too moist, then you're going to have problems. If it gets too, you know, so you want to make sure that it's kind of a temperature and humidity controlled environment. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this over here. And I just put this this towel down here so I won't get uh, oil on the any oil residue. I'm just going to put a couple of drops of oil, one there on each side. And you had to clean these. In I did mineral clean spirits. the I did clean these these bearings in mineral spirits. And these bearings, they are. Uh, we'll put a link down below. Okay. So now I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to put some another drop or two of oil. I just put a couple of drops on each side. Doesn't need much oil at all. But I cleaned the grease that was on there. I cleaned that grease off. So now we're going to pretend it's a spinner. And we're, I'm just holding the center here and I'm spinning this around. That will help that oil get evenly distributed. Same thing here. Same thing here. And you want those to, to uh, spin freely here. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take one of those bearings, we're gonna drop it in right there. We're gonna take another one, we're gonna drop it in on that side right there. Like that. And if you see in this model here, you see these little, uh, I'll just call them a nib for lack of a better word, these little posts here. And we're gonna take that, we're gonna spread that apart slightly, put our roller right there in place, grab our other roller. Again, just drop it right in there, drop that right in there. Just spread that apart slightly. And drop that right into place, okay? And they should, should freely spin now. And and these rollers, nice. They they spin freely, which is absolutely what you want to have. Okay. Now, with regard to the tubing, um, that tubing it came in a a, a six meter long section, so I cut it into three equal parts. Now, right here, most of you will recognize this. So you have to push in on that to be able to get that tubing sometimes to feed in there correctly. And we're gonna feed that in there where it's uh, somewhere about like that right there. You may not be able to see it, but roughly about a half an inch, All right? And what is the function of pushing that thing in? So basically what that does is that that lets you, that is, it, it oh, keeps this okay. from pulling out freely. If that wasn't there, you'd be able, uh, that it would just slide really. in and out, gotcha. right? Gotcha. So you want it to kind of, it kind of locks it in place. Yeah. yeah. Now we're going to take that and we're going to set that right down in there. There we go. Set so, that on there. So you put the hydrometer thing close to the tubing. Yeah. And then exactly. all the desiccant pack stuff is and the down here. The desiccant pack is back here in the back. And this got these cute little ridges for your fingers yeah. here to hold. And those ridges, basically I put that, that fitting on the end with the ridges. Closest to the ridges. Right? So now let's go ahead and uh, let me get a roll of filament and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so now we're ready to take our roll of filament. And we're going to put that in the one here. We've got the tray with the deskin in there. So obviously I don't need a deskin packet now because I've got a tray of deskin in there. 
which, oh, by the way, you could reuse that desk in that's in there. Now I just got to find the end of it. That, I'll bet this is it right here. Well, I got to find the button, the end of the filament. <laughs> not always as easy as it looks, huh? It is not. Oh, there it is. I found it. All right. So, important note. By the way, purple is my wife's favorite color. So, I had some of this purple filament. I wanted to be able to use it for some of her projects. So, notice I'm going to put this filament down here in the bottom. Now, I'm going to have to stand up for this. So, let me uh, move the table out here. And notice, if you notice, if you look down in here, notice that tubing right here is, is just above the top of that hygrometer. Well, that's really good because we want this filament to feed in there. It's going to bottom feed instead of top feed. Basically, what we're doing is we're going to poke that filament in there. And we slide that through. For me to be able to feed it into. <laughs> so now. There it is. It'll be ready for me to. Uh to put that in the, put that in my Bamboo X1 carbon. And you always want to put the spool, like you said, where it's feeding Feeding from underneath. the bottom. So it will, it will freely spin and it will pull the, basically the 3D printer and the extruder is going to pull that filament out. Like that. And it, and then you can notice that as I pull this, it's pretty, it, it's, fairly smooth right now you, some might say well why didn't I use this 3d spool in my bamboo lab AMS well the reason I didn't and of course you want to snap your lid on here um, so you keep that as keep the moisture down you keep the moisture down so that spool won't fit in the AMS so now I have two choices I can either buy one of the reusable spools and transfer my filament from the spool it came on to that filament that fits in the AMS, which you can either 3D print those on your own printer, or you can buy them for about $12. Or I can come up with something like this and I can make as many of these as I want for as many colors as I want, right? And have them preloaded and ready to go. And then these will just feed into the back of the machine because there's a there's a, a spot there on the back to be able to feed an external spool of filament into the machine. You just hook it in there and load it and you're good to go. So just to give you an idea of the cost of this. So to 3D print these using that 3D Max filament that I purchased before, it was about 45 cents. Right, because it's $8.99 for a kilogram of filament. And then for this parts tray without the rollers and the, and the lid was 34.59 grams. Well, you do the math, that's about 31 cents. Now granted, there may be a little bit of waste, so okay, got it. Then the parts rollers, which are these two right here, you gotta have two of these, right? One, two. There are 15.7 grams for two of those. That's 14 cents. So total, that's 45 cents for these 3D printed parts out of that 899 spool of filament. And then the parts for all the Amazon pieces, these prices here are without tax, but all total, that's about $14.39. Total for, for the, the Amazon parts and the filament. So just the Amazon parts were about $13.93. So just to give you an idea, just, so under $15, 
I'm able to make one of these. Now, granted, I bought the parts for six. Okay, that's fine, but it's still a really cost-effective solution, and it helps me solve my problem of, I've got these other filaments. I want to be able to use them on my bamboo, and I don't want to, you know, I want to be as frugal with my money as I can, make my money last and go further and all that kind of thing. So that price, when you say it's under $15 for one, you've taken, like you bought six of these and you've divided the price of that by six and that's, yeah, that's how you conclude. Okay, that, I just wanted to correct. make sure we understood and, how you and, did and that. And the bearings and the fittings okay, and the silica beads and the machine oil and... Uh, and let's see, let's see, I said the bearings, the hygrometer, the tubing, the hygrometer, the mm -hmm. tubing, all yeah. of that, all of those pieces, they're all included there. Again, I will give you the parts list down below and uh, include that in the, in the description there. And one of the things I'm going to say is really cool about this is in the bamboo unit has a camera where it does a time-lapse video of us printing these. So we will add that into our video at the end so you can see what it looks like on a time lapse. So with that, I want to say thank you for watching us today. Uh, we very much appreciate your support. If you uh, enjoy our content, please like and subscribe uh, to our channel. Um, please feel free to leave us any comments, any feedback that uh, you may have, questions you may have, and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to answer those in a timely manner. Again, we want to thank you for watching today. I'm Greg with The Oily Crafter and my wife Judy behind the camera. Again, thank you again and have a blessed day.